Children under five commonly get treated with antibiotics for respiratory tract infections, but unfortunately our diagnostic tools for this, which are chest x-ray and inflammatory markers, they're actually not very good at discriminating between viral and bacterial infections. So we need to balance the risk of overusing antibiotics with appropriately managing treatment in these children. And that's where the CAPIT study comes in. The CAPIT paper by Bialiki et al. was published in JAMA at the end of 2021. And here's everything that you need to know about it. So the data was collected over a 26 month period, which covered 28 hospitals in the UK and one in Ireland. All patients were discharged from the emergency department or observation units within 48 hours of presentation. Children were included in the trial if they were over six months of age, if they weighed between six and 24 kilos, and if they were discharged with a diagnosis of community acquired pneumonia. The diagnosis of community acquired pneumonia was based on the British Thoracic Society guidelines. This includes a parent or guardian reported cough within the previous 19 six hours, a measured temp over 38 degrees or parental reported fever within the preceding 48 hours and signs of laboured or difficult breathing or focal chest signs. There were no tests, x-rays or anything like that needed for diagnosis in this study. They were excluded if they'd had recent antibiotics, if they had a severe underlying chronic disease, if they had complicated pneumonia or a contraindication to amoxicillin. In the end, 824 patients were enrolled in the study. There were actually over 1,800 that were excluded for various reasons such as going home on a different antibiotic, being in hospital for longer than 48 hours, or language barriers or parental preference. Of the 824, 10 didn't actually take the trial drug, and so we had 814 in the study. What was the intervention? Well, there's two interventions here. One is about the dose of the medication that's given, and one is about the length of medication. So the dose given was either 35 to 50 milligrams per kilogram of amoxicillin, or 70 to 90 milligrams per kilogram of amoxicillin. And the duration of treatment from discharge was either three days or seven days. In both treatment groups, the dose was actually divided into BD dosing, so twice daily dosing. This is in contrast to what we usually use in the UK, which is three times a day dosing, but is in keeping with international guidance. So what were the results? Let's look first at the primary outcome. Remember, the primary outcome was looking at whether they needed further doses of antibiotics within 28 days. In the group that was low dose and short duration, 12% of them needed another course of antibiotics within 28 days. In the group with low dose but longer duration, 13% of them needed a further course of antibiotics within 28 days. In the patients with a higher dose but a shorter course of antibiotics, 13% of them needed a further course of antibiotics within the 28 days. And in the group with a higher dose and a longer duration, just under 12% of them needed a further course of antibiotics. What they showed when they looked at the groups was that in children with community acquired pneumonia, whether the dose was lower or higher or the duration was longer or shorter, it actually made no difference to the primary outcome of whether further courses of antibiotics were needed. So that's the primary outcome, but what about the secondary outcomes? The duration of the cough was longer in the children who had a shorter course of amoxicillin. So that meant the duration of the cough was 12 days as opposed to 10 days, but there was no difference in any other clinical symptoms between the groups. Other adverse events included diarrhea, which 44% of the children had, skin rashes and oral thrush. Of all of these, skin rashes actually did have a statistical relationship to how long the treatment was for. So in patients who only had a three day course of treatment, 22% of them got a skin rash, but in patients with a seven day course of treatment, 27% of them got a skin rash. There was no statistically significant difference in colonization with strep pneumonia between the groups. And perhaps not surprisingly, children who were given a shorter duration of amoxicillin treatment were more likely to actually stick to the plan and complete the course. So 98% of children completed the three day course, but only 91% completed the seven day course. So that's the paper summarised, but how good is the paper? Let's go through the CASP checklist. Question one, does the study address a clearly focused issue? Yes, it does. We're looking at children with community acquired pneumonia and looking at whether the dose and duration of treatment affects the outcome. Was the cohort recruited in an acceptable way? Yes, it was. Patients were identified at the time of ED presentation and were recruited at the time of discharge. Was the exposure accurately measured to minimise bias? Yes, participants were randomly allocated into one of the four groups in a one-to-one -one ratio. Blinding was achieved by rebottling and repackaging the medication so you couldn't tell which dose you were taking. And for your seven-day course of treatment, if you were in the three-day arm, you were given a placebo bottle to take. 
cake for the remainder of the days. Was the outcome accurately measured to minimise bias? Yes, symptoms were recorded by parents in a symptom diary that they were given and they had scheduled follow-up phone calls with the research team. Have the authors identified all the confounding factors? The authors identified several limitations to the study and some of these are really important to consider. I think the most important one is how we actually diagnose whether these children had community acquired pneumonia. This study used the British Thoracic Society guidelines and that doesn't involve any specific tests to confirm. It's based on clinical presentation and actually this is what we do in clinical practice but realistically this means that a number, I don't know how many, but a reasonable number of these patients will probably have had viral infections rather than bacterial infections. Truthfully though, this is just what we're doing in practice, so actually the results are important for us to use and apply to what we do every day. The retreatment rates were actually pretty high in both groups, regardless of what dose you got. They're around 10%, so it does make us wonder whether we should be rethinking how we're diagnosing pneumonia and also how we're actually treating it. Was the follow-up of the subject accurate? 59% had a face-to-face -face follow-up at 28 days and a further 19% had a phone follow-up. But the use of GP records to check antibiotic prescribing meant that we got 97% follow-up at 28 days. So what were the results? The results show that treatment for three days with amoxicillin at a dose of 35 to 50 milligrams per kilogram per day is not inferior to giving a seven day course or a higher dose in children with community acquired pneumonia who are over six months of age who are discharged from an ED or an observation unit within 48 hours. Do we believe the results? Yes, I do believe these results. Can the results be applied to a local population? Yes, the results can be applied to the local population. Remember that there's a low incidence of resistant strep pneumonia in the UK population. Do the results fit with other evidence that's available? Well, actually for children discharged from ED with pneumonia, there's not been that many trials. There is a Canadian trial called the SAFER trial which compared five day course of antibiotics to a 10 day course and they also found that there's no difference in the duration of the treatment. But this is the first study that's also looked at the dose given as well. Finally, what is the conclusion of the study? The conclusion of the study is that giving a shorter course of amoxicillin at a lower dose is actually not inferior to giving a higher dose or a longer course for the treatment of community acquired pneumonia in children. It does mean that children in the shorter group might have a longer duration of cough but it's only a couple of days and it's not really clear what the impact that would have on families and you have to weigh that up against the compliance or adherence to treatment of taking a longer course of antibiotics anyway. This is a great study that I'm sure is going to change our practice. If you have any thoughts about the CAPIT trial, please put a comment in the box under the video.